Morning guys, John here. Um, I've been crazy sick the past few days. Oh, so bad. But, uh, can't stop progress. Um, a few days ago, I was talking to my wife and saying, you know, I don't really, I can't really find the time to work on my custom knives. Um, because I spend, you know, all my free time making these handles and knuckle tools and all the little projects that I got going and I just can't seem to find the time to, uh, you know, to design and play with and learn how to make a knife. And it's something I really, really want to do, but um, I just haven't found the time yet. And she said, take one day a week and devote the entire day to working on your knives. Guilt-free. You don't have to work on anything else. Just, uh, just work on the knives the whole day. Brilliant. So I've got Knife Making Tuesday now. Uh, that was yesterday. First one. And uh, it's just wonderful. It actually will show some progress every week. You know, I could learn some skill and and uh, get better at it, hopefully. So yesterday, uh, my task was to um, learn how to machine a blade. See, I don't have a belt grinder. Well, I have a little 1x42 belt grinder, but and I don't particularly want to buy a nice $3,000 2x72 right now. Um, so I want to I want to learn how to machine a blade completely and uh, hopefully so that it doesn't require any finished grinding at all maybe a quick pass no problem but uh, if you look at Brian Ty's website uh, a lot of his blades are fully machined and you can tell by the fluted pattern um, now you can do it so that you hardly even notice the machining marks um, Neptune posted a video of uh, Browse his little neck knives are fully machined as well so that's really cool um, so anyway Yesterday, I uh, here's my SolidWorks. We'll uh, we'll go into the computer from now on and do some computer uh, screenshots. All right, guys. Here we are in SolidWorks. Um, I've designed four blades. These are completely garbage, just proof of concept testing. They do look pretty cool, I will say. Uh, this one here is a direct ripoff of a Jens Anso. Uh, blade and uh, the the point of this exercise is not to design my own from scratch it's to learn how to machine it so um, so I'm just trying various different styles this is a ripoff of a Bob Terzola um, so like for testing purposes I don't feel bad about ripping people off because I'm not going to make these or sell them or anything just proof of concept once I have the skills down then I can design my own this one I designed but it's just sort of goofy and this is just a regular Warncliffe uh, simpleton. Now it should be noted these blades are tiny. Like the whole length of this line is five inches, which makes each blade probably about two inch total length, less than an inch width. So these are going to be tiny. But um, it's just that I have some steel that's eighth inch thick, and this size five by uh, by one and a half, and uh, this lets me squeeze as much action as I can into one machine setup. So, um, yeah, it, <coughs> big, uh, the big news is that I figured out how to actually render and design these blade profiles, um, which is wicked, because I'd never done that before in SolidWorks. And, uh, now that I have the skills down for that, then I can design, you know, any blade shape and know that I can machine it. Um, so we'll jump, open up solid cam here. Uh, the first step is drill the holes in the blades, and then drill something else, and then drill these, uh, what are they called? I'm so sick. Um, jimping. God. Uh, That's weird. Anyway, and then um, as far as 3D machining, here's what that looks like. This is a series of tool paths, stepping down two thousandths of an inch, and following the profile using a uh, quarter-inch ball mill. We'll see how it works.
and for each of the four blades I'm trying a different step over. Now with a really tiny step over you, you won't see the machining lines at all but with a big one you'll see grooves um, I might as well just show you guys like here this is Brian's Nurk tie and uh, you see the fluted pattern so this is a fully machined blade he doesn't grind anything he puts the edge on it that's it so uh, and he's got a really big step over you can see every single tool mark and that's on purpose now what I want to do is find out what's the biggest step over I can get away with without seeing the, um, the tool marks anymore so I've got two thou for that one uh, four thou for that one, six thou for the Warren Cliff, and eight thou for the uh, duck bill, whatever it's called. So you can see the tight lines here, looser, looser, and looser. And we'll see what it what it does. And then I'll flip the piece over, and then re uh, re clamp it down, and then do the same thing for the other side and then I'll go through and profile it out. Notice I have um, the lines here. Y you have to ho hold each blade from two points. So I'm holding it from here and I'm going to hold it from here too. Notice how every blade is connected to this X so that I can hold the front end of the blade. Uh, and then I'll just have to grind this little area off afterwards. This is just proof of concepts and not a big deal. Um, so let's do a simulation because this is always fun. Fun to see. Uh, it, it's telling me that I'm going to smash into this bolt here, which is fine. I know that now. <laughs> so it's going to take some good gouges out of that bolt, but whatever. So it's just going pass by pass by pass. This one's faster. That one's faster, and that one's faster too. And then we flip over to the other side. <laughs> I don't know why it's doing this part, but it shouldn't affect my cut at all. And then do that one, and then afterwards it's going to profile and cut them all out. And there it goes. Thank you, you are done. See, so it's got some material left here that I'll have to break off. Uh, this one looks awesome. This one here has some, uh, has an area right there that it's not machining. I don't know why. Not a big deal. And the other ones look cool. So, and then I'll just break them off the tabs. They're only but well, yeah, they will be pretty thick. This one's going to be thin. But, yeah, so that's this project. I got, um, where are you? Here's my code. Quarter inch drill, 532 drill, 16th inch drill. Little notes to myself, change to this drill. And I'm going to engrave um, the step over depth in every one, like 2,000, 4,000. And yeah, long, 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 long. So I think I'm ready to get out in the garage and test this bad boy out. So we'll move out there now. Alright, so I'm out here in the garage. Um, got this piece of 1018 uh, steel, just plain old uh, mild steel. This wouldn't be good for blades or anything like that. Low carbon steel. Just junk for practice. Uh, so I got it bolted down uh, in five places and I got my nice little uh, Come on, focus. There. Got my engravings in place, just so I can remember, uh, you know, what step over each blade is going to be. And my 1 16th holes turned out way, uh, like they wouldn't center themselves when they were going down. Because um, I'm using such a long, long drill bit, it'd be nice to uh, to center drill them first to line up, line up a little pilot hole. But whatever not important. Uh, so I've got my quarter inch ball mill in the machine right now and this is the point where we hit go and cross our fingers and hope it doesn't explode. 
So I got my keyboard, Alt, R. So it's just gonna do a thousand passes like that and then uh, we'll check in with it once it's all done. I think I'm gonna walk away and go inside and have lunch because this is gonna take like, I don't know, half an hour, maybe more. All right, not bad. The profiling only took, or not profiling, whatever that's called, only took about 22 minutes. And uh, dang, this top one looks wicked with the two thou step over. You can hardly see the tool marks at all. Some of these other ones are much more noticeable. Uh, these lines right in the middle here of that top one. That's uh, due to backlash in my machine. <laughs> Fixable. But definitely noticeable. But like I said, fixable. Wow, that one looks awesome. So now I'm going to flip it over. And uh, we'll do the same thing to the other side. And just like we saw in the simulation, this Anzo style blade has a bit of extra junk right there, which uh, might cause a problem. I don't know why it's doing that, but whatever. So let's flip it over and then we'll do another, uh, same thing on the other side. One more thing, remember how I said these blades were really small? Just a proof of concept. Here's my Manix blade compared to these guys. Yeah, it's they're, they're pretty small, but uh, hey, proof of concept, couldn't be happier. Just finished the second side, pretty awesome. But, uh, tore into my bolt there in the middle, no big deal. Yeah, this, this uh, closest blade is certainly the best one. And the Anso style blade. Well, let's take it out of the fixture here and uh, we'll take a closer look at it. Well, there we have it. <clears throat> I'd say that was a very productive knife making Tuesday and Wednesday morning and Wednesday afternoon. I could spend the rest of the week uh, catching up on other projects, but knowing that I actually made some wicked progress in my knife making endeavor. These are awesome, man. Look how small they are, though. Let's see. Pull out Manix. Yeah, it kind of dwarfs them. But proof of concept. Let's see if macro kicks in. Engraving turned out really good, too. I used a scripty kind of font. Looks sweet. Now that I started to work with it, I'm, a, I'm becoming a huge fan of this sort of hollow ground part here, and then what's it called, convex or whatever, uh, in the front. Like Anzo does a lot of stuff like that. It looks really cool. Yeah, this top one turned out the best by far. Oh, the Warncliffe looks cool. Looks cool as is. And, uh... And this sort of funky one looks really cool, too. So now I just got to break them off and then uh, grind off the little tabs. And there you have it. <clears throat> so that was uh, this week's Knife Making Tuesday project. Tune in next week. Uh, probably next Wednesday I'll post another video. And uh, I'm hoping to work on locking mechanisms. So I got a bunch of button lock parts, and uh, probably try a frame lock too. And so my goal is just week by week, piece through a knife, 
you know, every break it up into all the different aspects of a knife, um, and just tackle them, learn them piece by piece, and then within a few short weeks, I can hopefully put put a whole knife together. Got the handles figured out because I make a buttload of those already. But you know, working with titanium and all kinds of stuff just takes practice. So thanks for watching and uh, comment. Let me know what you what you think of these dinky little guys. They make really cool little pocket knives. And uh, talk to you guys later. Bye.